Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Atmosphere. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Mongo API on Cosmos DB in the context of the mean stack. Hi guys, today I'm going to take a look at the Mongo API in Cosmos DB. Now this is a very interesting use case because Mongo is one of the most popular open source databases that exists, and it's probably the most popular document database that exists. And what Microsoft has done with Cosmos is implemented it at a protocol level. So you can use this almost as a drop and replacement for many Mongo based applications. And we're going to be looking at how you can use an application with this and show you just how easy it really is to use. And then we're going to talk about some of the features that it has that you can take advantage of that come with Cosmos DB. So as I mentioned, this is another document database on Azure. We have a document database with the SQL API, but this one is again using MongoDB's API implementation. So what we've done is we've implemented a API level, a protocol level implementation of MongoDB, but under the hood, you basically get the same feature set that you would with the SQL API. So you would basically read and write all your data using the Mongo APIs to the database, but if you wanted to set up other features like you would on the SQL API, you can do that. A few that are worth mentioning here are you, the flexible consistency models that you get with the SQL API. So if you want strong consistency, you can turn that on or you can turn on eventual consistency or one of the other ones in the middle. It also supports Synapse Link. So SQL API supports this feature, but so does the Mongo API. And basically what that does is pivots your data from the kind of document storage that is by default and pivots it to more columnar storage and then puts it over into a Synapse cluster so that you can do different kinds of analytics workloads against that. It also supports the change feed, which is a very useful feature if you want to get updates on changes made to the documents being written to the database. And what you can do with this is wire up something like an Azure function that will respond to the database when changes are made to a given collection in that database. And it also supports a lot of the standard features that come with Cosmos DB that are available to all of the APIs, such as scaling and a single button click for a replication to another Azure region. So all of these kinds of features are what come with Cosmos DB, which makes it a, a very nice value proposition, as well as just being as a service on Azure, but you get all these other features that you can tune to make your application behave however you need it to, or get the consistency levels you need, or get the kind of scaling you need for your application. So let's go and look at how this would work in the context of a more traditional stack called the mean stack for writing applications against MongoDB. Now MongoDB is used as part of the mean stack, which is a moniker given as an alternative or maybe a different solution like what you should get with a LAMP stack, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, or MariaDB, and a scripting language like PHP or Python. Now, this particular stack uses analog technologies, but it's implemented using different technologies. So instead of a MariaDB database, you would have a MongoDB uh, database in this case, and that's where we get the M from. Instead of Apache, we have ExpressJS, which is a built-in web server to Node.js, but you can use that to serve up static content, and you can also use it to build APIs with as well. Now, the A traditionally in means stood for Angular when it was popular. So this moniker was developed in the early 2010s uh, when Angular was popular, but it's kind of fallen out of favor for other uh, front-end frameworks like Vue or React. So instead of calling it Angular, they call it alternatives to that. So you can still maintain the A in mean stack. And of course, Node.js is as popular as ever. And it's basically JavaScript on the server side. So you can write applications in JavaScript and it's using Express as a part of that, but you get the Node.js as the scripting language of choice. And it's the alternative to something like 
PHP or Python for building the applications that you're going to be writing in. But at the core of this, again, is MongoDB. And MongoDB provides a client to Node.js that you can interact with in your Node.js code. Then, of course, your front end is going to be written in some kind of front end framework that is going to be served up. And then you're going to be calling the APIs that are going to be on Express that are going to be tapping into that Mongo database. Now I'm here in the Azure portal and I'm looking at an instance of Cosmos DB with the Mongo API turned on. And I want to just look at the feature set for this. It's pretty straightforward. Now, right here we see what we have turned on and I, I don't have much you know, on right now, but I do want to show you that you can use Azure Synapse link with this because that is the ability to export data from Cosmos DB over to Azure Synapse and then do some transformations on that and OLAP type workloads. Now you can do aggregations and other things in Cosmos DB. It's just not very good at it. You want to use something that's more ideal for that if you're going to be doing a lot of reporting and data aggregations and that's what synapse is for now this is the consistency level that we can set inside of our uh, database session is the default so basically the session key will be passed with um, each request and then basically your all your writes and reads will be the same in this uh, if you have eventual consistency turned on this is generally the one that i like to use for most of my applications it's going to be just fine eventual consistency will get the job done now, of course, you have all the other features like uh, private endpoints, data migrations, and so on that you can do with this particular um, kind of database, just like you would with the SQL API and that. So this is really not that much different from what you would be doing inside of the SQL API. The biggest difference here is instead of using that, I can use the Mongo API and I can explore the data here if I want to and write uh, different kinds of queries against this database here. And so I've got a very small database that doesn't have any data in it, but I'm going to run an application here in a second that's going to uh, populate this database with some records. But otherwise, it's pretty much the same as the SQL API, except I'm able to use the Mongo API for my application instead of using the SQL API. So this is the sample application that I've downloaded that I wanted to use to show you the mean stack in context with MongoDB. And I'll put a link to this app down in the video description below if you want to play with this. Basically, this is just written in, in JavaScript using Node.js. So if I open up this file right here, this is app.js. And that's a commonly used file name for the, the root of a given application. And this is using Express as part of the mean stack. And Mongoose is the client library for uh, MongoDB. Now, this Mongoose library also works with the APIs provided by Cosmos DB. So you can use the same library for if I'm running a MongoDB cluster on either locally on my dev box or as a server on some cluster somewhere, or if I'm running it as a service with Cosmos DB. And then, of course, Express is being exposed as app. And this is wiring up all of the all of the routes that go to controllers, as well as the static content, which provides the JavaScript front end and HTML front end for this that we'll look at in a browser. So this is using a connection string like we would typically use for MongoDB. And I'm just hard coding it here. I, I, I didn't want to populate all the variables, so I, I was lazy and just hard coded it here. And that is what's going to be using for the connection back to my application based on a database URL, which is MongoDB. And then it's giving the name of the database and the connection string and the, the password and username and so on for this. Um, now, the actual application itself is pretty straightforward. It's got you know a couple of dependencies. It's got some loggers. It's using some different routes and things like that. Well, once you have all of this code written, you, you fire it right up. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, open up this right here. Uh, this is a command prompt. And I could run npm install to install the dependencies, but I've already done that. So I'm just going to type in npm start. And that's going to start this application. And now let's get a new browser window here. And um, let's open up localhost 3000. And this is my uh, application running right here. So if I look at my console down here, you can see that it's it's requesting the CSS and the 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 kind of supporting libraries that go with the HTML uh, that this gets right here. So this is the application. It's just the Azure to do list application. This time running against Cosmos DB. So this one is using the Mongo API. 
And there's different flavors of this for different um, kinds of storage on Azure, but I'm using the Mongo one. So if I create a task, I can hit blaze, add task. And then if I say test one, two, three, add that. If I add another task, I can go ABC, add that task. Now let's complete a couple of these. And now I have three tasks. Now I should see that in my database if I go back over to my database. So let's go back over to the Azure portal and um, let's go ahead and open that up. And let's go back into my database and see what that looks like. Last time we saw it, we didn't have any data in that database. So now I should expect to see a couple of documents in there that have been written. So if I come back over here to Data Explorer and open up my uh, my collection here, uh, tasks, and I'll go to my documents. I now have three documents as a part of this. Let me zoom out a little here. And this one says completed true. This one's completed, um, not completed. And this one is completed true. So if I delete that um, one that is not completed right here, um, and if I refresh the page, I, I should get the exact same list. And that's what happens. So that's what I have here. But it, um, now if I refresh this, that, that document should be gone. I should only have two. And let's just change this to, to false for all for good measure or and uh, delete this object right here. Just, just you know, go ahead and edit the data directly in the, the portal here and then update. And uh, let's reload the application over here in this. And it brings it back up to incompleted. And so if I complete it, I should come back over here, refresh this uh, right here. And I should be able to get the updated version of that document now it's completed and we can see that here reflected in my app as well so again this is just a very straightforward app to show you the way that the app is interacting with express and node.js writing back to a cosmos db using the mongo api so it's using that mean stack approach but in this case instead of running this as something that be running against a a Cosmos D or rather a MongoDB cluster or local dev instance of that, I'm running against Cosmos DB with the Mongo API. If you like this content, please consider checking us out online at www.windelect.com where you can find several blog entries about topics related to Microsoft Azure and software development. And you can also subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button below and then clicking on the bell icon to receive notifications when new content becomes available. Until next time, thanks. Thank you.